Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much and we thank you, Lord God, for who you are and for everything that you have done, continue to do in each of our lives. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your presence and for your anointing. Burden removing, yoke destroying, power of God. Let me manifest in this place right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we lift unto you, Lord God, this service and we pray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that your mighty power continue to touch your people. Because you know the needs of the people and you know what the people are going through and what the need is. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the breakthroughs in the name of Jesus, for the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ will touch the body of your people. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the total deliverance, total restoration in the name of Jesus. And Father, we lift unto you, Lord God, our men of God, Pastor Larry, we thank you, Father, for you using him tonight as your instrument, as your vessel, Lord God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Father, for and advance, Lord God, for this service tonight. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Holy Spirit. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, you may have a seat in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, tonight we, we expect Him that the Lord will visit us. We expect Him the touch from heaven. Amen. And we um, also lift them um, all of the prayer requests and praying for the needs of people of your families. And those who is watching right now, also we pray for your families. Amen. Because it is a power in prayer. And when we release the prayer, when we release the word of God, when we release the, uh, the word of God in the through prayer and the situations and circumstances. The scripture says that his word will not return void, but his word, the God's word, will manifest in that situation and that in that circumstances. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So Father, we lift unto you, Lord God, everyone who is in our prayer list. We pray, Father, for every family those who is here tonight, those who is watching this broadcast, Lord. We pray, Lord God, for unsaved ones, loved ones. We pray, Lord God, for the children, grandchildren. We pray, Lord God, for the husbands and wives and brothers and sisters, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for the neighbors and those who will stay in the gap and build the hedge. And we pray, Lord God, for the you take the blinds off of their eyes and, and they, they will know the truth. They will walk on the truth. And as they know the truth, the truth will set them free in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you, Lord God. As we save, as we save, as we serve in you, Lord God, all of our household will serve you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we pray, Father, for those who need a touch from heaven, Lord God regarding the healing and the bodies. And we, Father, we pray, Lord God, for the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ will move in the, in the body of those who is in pain and those who is suffering. And, Father, we take authority in the name of Jesus and we break every demonic assignment that come against the, the bodies of the people in Jesus' name. And we command to be loose in Jesus' name. And, Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the healing power right now for the healing power right now moving in the body of your people in Jesus' name. And those who we pray right now in the name of Jesus. So receive this healing right now in the name of Jesus. Those who struggle with addiction, any form of addiction, we break the power of the Satan right now in authority in the name of Jesus. And we release the freedom from Christ Jesus and for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We, we say that they heal, they deliver, and they set free from the power of the enemy in the name of Jesus. And Father, we give you all the praise, and we give you all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, those who suffer with the
mental illness. Those who suffer with the mental illness, we bind every work of Satan in the name of Jesus right now. And we resist you, devil, in authority in the name of Jesus. Father, you said any words, submit to God and resist the Satan. And right now, in prayer, we submit to you in the name of Jesus. And we resist every demonic force of evil that come against the people's minds. I, I command and authority in the name of Jesus that every generational curse has been broke. Every generational curse of any mental illness has been broke in Jesus' name. We apply the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. And we release the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ. We command the spirit of depression. We break it. We break it. We break it. We command and authority in the name of Jesus, every bipolar disorder, every schizoaffective disorder, we break it off right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, by your stripes, your people is healed. We release this healing power right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, Pastor Larry is here. He is coming right now and he will minister to us. Amen. Amen. today and prepare to receive from heaven glory thank you Lord Jesus <laughs> amen amen and so uh, my dear friend God bless you all welcome to the new life of Christ Jesus Church where Jesus Christ is glorified amen we've been dealing with a message on midweek service on authority. Amen. Jesus Christ, authority in you. Amen. His authority is in you. And when we can, when we understand that, we can see how God wants to use us in these last days because he wants to use you. Amen. He wants to use you in these last days. How many of you want to be used? Amen. Amen. We all do, don't we? Glory to God, because uh, we, are, we, are, we are here, and we are ready to receive from Almighty God. Amen. Hallelujah, glory to God. Amen. Amen. And so now, I want to, can I sing y'all a song tonight? Amen. I would love to sing y'all a song tonight. And I hope my voice hold up, I believe it will. <laughs> I believe it will. So let's try. Let's let's do it and see. Father, we thank you for this thank you, Lord. evening. We thank you for this service tonight, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for those Amen. that are with us in in the building here inside, and we thank you for those that are with us by the internet. Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus that you will move supernaturally across the airwaves and even inside the building here tonight, God, with your with a special anointing, Father. You have given us the anointing. We are anointed because of what Jesus Christ did for us. When he forgave us, he anointed us that we may, that we may continue walking in the freedom and in the liber liberty of his word. Amen. And so, Father, we thank you and we praise you for it in the name of Jesus. So, Father, before we get started, we bind every demonic force that would try to operate against the people, against the, the service. We counsel it in the spiritual realm right now. And we declare, we decree today, supernatural impartations will go forth. 
And we declare it by faith. And we give you all the glory for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you and welcome to a new life in Christ Jesus Church where Jesus Christ is glorified. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory, Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm going to sing y'all this song. And uh, we're going to go right into our service. Amen. I pledge Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. With all my strength. Yes, Lord. With all I am, I will seek to honor His commands. I pledge allegiance to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I have heard how Christians long ago were brought before a tyrant's throne. They were told that he would spare their lives if they would renounce the name of Christ. But God Son of God, they would not deny, like a great angelic choir singing, I can almost hear their voices ring. Our time has come to count the cost, to reject this world, to embrace the cross. But one by one, let us live our lives for the one who died to give us life to the tongue. That final day, let us proudly stand and boldly say, I pledge allegiance to the Lamb. With all my strength, with all I am, I will seek to honor these commands.
States of America has been placed in Jerusalem as capital. All oh, that made history. Amen. And I want to encourage you all to pray for Jerusalem. Amen. And pray for our president because you see God is using this man and this is why the world don't like him. God is using him and this is why he's under a lot of pressure. So we should all we should continue to pray for the president. Amen. And especially now don't forget now tomorrow is Thursday. Tomorrow is Thursday. And you know what we always do on Thursday and Friday? We praise, we pray on Thursday and Friday at 9 in the morning, 12 at noon, and 3 in the evening. Amen. So I, it, I, it, I want you all to uh to just uh continue in prayer. At 9 in the morning, remember we're praying for the who? We're praying for the peace of Jerusalem. We're praying that their borders remain protected. Why? Because right now, they're under a lot of pressure. Their borders are under a lot of pressure. Amen. Guys the script, the guys the script people, they I mean they're trying to the Syrians, they're trying to they trying to start some, some some stuff over there. So we need to keep Jerusalem up in prayer. So let's don't forget that. Tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., we're going to be praying for Jerusalem. And folks, if every one of us pray, is and only pray for 10 minutes. My God, you'd be surprised how much we can accomplish, how much we can get, how much we can pray for in ten minutes. You know, you can pray for the prime minister that God will continue to give him wisdom, the, and, the, and the president of Jerusalem that, uh, of Israel that God will continue to direct him. Pray for the uh, uh, for the military personnel that they will continue to guard the borders. Amen. Keeping the citizens of Jerusalem safe. Amen. Because you see, a lot of Americans goes there on tours. Amen. A lot, and people from around the world go there on tours, right. amen, and visit the place. Because it, it's a very strategic, uh, it plays a, a very uh, a powerful role in humanity as we know it. Amen. amen. So we need to always pray for Jerusalem. And then at 12 p.m., we're going to be praying for the body of Christ, the fivefold ministry gifts. Amen. amen. Don't forget, we're going to pray for, at 9 a.m., we'll be praying for Jerusalem. Gonna pray for the, the borders protection, the protection of their borders. We're gonna be praying for the for the salvation of the Jews. Amen. Pray for their salvation. We're gonna be praying for God to just touch them, breathe upon them, a freshness of His presence. Amen. Then at twelve noon, we're gonna be praying for the body of Christ, the fivefold ministry gifts. Amen. For a spirit of unity and one accord. Amen. And then at three p.m., folks, at three p.m., we're gonna be praying for uh, the White House. Uh, our president. We're going to be praying for all those of his cabinet members. We're going to be praying for all those that's in authority, even in our local, in our local cities. Amen. The, our our, 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 our uh, judges and our the lawmakers and the, those that, that that are passing the laws. Amen. We need to keep these people up in prayer because, folks, there's a lot. Of, there's, there are still a lot of ungodly laws that are getting through, and if the churches of God would pray. We can put an end to a lot of that. Amen. It's just like a snake just study working his way, getting himself, getting, getting, getting in position. Amen. And it's because the children of God is not praying properly. They're not praying. So we need to all pray. We need we should always pray and not to faint. Amen. And then I want y'all to remember, don't forget to pray for me. Because I'm praying for you. And don't you forget to pray for me. Amen. I really I really appreciate that. Glory to God. I really appreciate that. Amen. Because every time at, at, at 9 in the morning, 12 at noon, and 3 in the evening, before I start praying for any of those other people, I always ask God to, to look upon 
those intercessors, those that are praying, God to breathe upon them, give them supernatural insight that they will be able to pray effectively. Amen. And so we want we want the same for me. Amen. I want the same for myself. So y'all pray for me also. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Philippines is on the line. Amen. God bless you all. We're talking about, uh, we're still talking about uh, the authority. Amen. We're still talking about walking in, the, in, you know, the authority of the believer. Amen. The authority of the believer. Uh, because this is very, very important in these last days. Amen. This is very important. And as we, and as we have uh, started on last, you know, last week, I, I did four, last week was my fourth message along this line. And I thought that I was going to quit, but in my spirit, I knew that I shouldn't quit right then. Amen. So that's why we're coming back again today. Amen. Uh, teaching the same, teaching along the same line. Because you see, we cannot exercise authority if we don't know that we have it. Amen. You cannot, you see, I, I, can, I can give you, I can put a $20 bill in your hand. You can put it somewhere in your wallet or somewhere in your purse and you forget that it's there. When you need it, you you won't you won't be able to use it because even though you have it, it's yours. You can't use it because you don't know where it's at. You don't know that it's yours. You don't know that you have it. Amen. It's the same way with the authority. You have it, but if you don't know that it's yours, if you don't know that you can use it, you won't use it. Amen. And the enemy, which is the devil, will take advantage of your ignorance. Amen. And this is something that God. Is want us to correct in our own life, in our personal lives. We should be aware of who we are as children of Almighty God and the authority that He has given us. I want to turn your attention right now to the book of Luke, chapter Luke, chapter nine. The book of Luke, chapter nine, and I want to look at verse number, verse number one, Amen. Verse number one and two, Amen. Luke chapter nine, verse number one and two, Amen. Because, you see, God has given you authority. He has given you not only authority, but he has given you power. Amen. He has given you power. Amen. So we want to we want to uh, we want to check that out right now. Y'all want y'all with me on today? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Because, you see, I want you to I want you to understand that this is not something that I'm just making up. This is what this is the word of God. It, this is the word of God. Amen. Amen. This is the word of God. Glory to his name. Amen. So now let's look at verse number verse number one. It said, and then he called his 12 disciples together. Now notice what he said, and gave them power. See, you not only have power, but God gave you power and what? And authority. And authority. God has given you power as a believer and authority. Amen. Now notice, what he, now, now notice why he gave it to you. Over all devils. Amen. Amen. He gave you power and authority over all devils. Amen. Amen. To what? To, to cast them out. Amen. Over all devils and to cure diseases. Amen. And then he said in verse number two, and he sent them to preach the kingdom of God. Amen. To preach the kingdom of God. Amen. And glory to God. And to heal the sick. So God has given you power. God has given you power and authority. Amen. Remember on last week I started talking to you about these, the book of Ephesians. Amen. Can we just go to the book of Ephesians right now? Amen. Chapter, let's go to chapter 1 first. Book of Ephesians chapter 1. Because I want, I, I, I made mention of these, of these spiritual prayers here that, uh, uh, that I, that I learned about when I was in Bible school at Rainbow Bible Training Center. Amen. Kendall Hagen Ministries. Amen. And uh, these prayers that I'm about to introduce you to, I know some of you have already been made aware of them, and uh, there's, but there's a lot of people that have not made, been made aware of them. These are spiritual prayers that was prayed over Ephesians. Amen. The Church of, e of Ephesians. Amen. And it, it was prayed over the Christians. It wasn't prayed over the non-Christians. It was a prayer that was prayed over the Christian because it was a Christian man doing the praying. It was Paul. Amen. And so when we look at this, we're going to see here that God, he not only, uh, 
use it to uh, strengthen the church in that day, amen, to strengthen the believer in that day, but you can say these same prayers over your life, you can personalize these prayers and pray them over your life, and you will be amazed at what God will begin to do in your own life, amen. Notice what it says right here in verse number 16, chapter 1, verse number 16, it said, cease not to give thanks for you, make a mention of you in my prayer, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom. Notice what he said, may give unto you, the believer, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Amen. That notice what it said in verse number 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what is the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the workings of his mighty power. See, God gave Paul this prayer, and he prayed it over the church of Ephesians, amen. Uh, and he prayed it over the believers, amen. And, 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 and Kenneth Hagin, he showed us how to personalize this prayer that you may be able to pray it over your own life, amen. And, and, and what I like, I like what he said about when he learned what he, what, when he started praying it over his life. He said he, he said he prayed over his life about a thousand times. Then all of a sudden, the spirit of wisdom and the revelation and knowledge began to operate in him. He began to understand. I mean, God began to speak to him with revel wisdom, revelation, and knowledge. Amen. With the spirit of wisdom and the revelation and the spirit and, and, and knowledge. Amen. The gifts of the spirit began to operate in his life when he began to read these things over his life. And that's when he became a, a, a world known prophet. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, you can you can cause your your gifts and your calling to be magnified if you will learn the key, the key to unleashing the, 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 the presence of God in your life. Amen? In your life. So I like this because it, it showed me something very important here. Now notice what he said, verse number 16 again. Now this time I'm going to, I'm going to personalize this. I'm going to read it this time, but I'm going to personalize it because when I, normally when I read this, I'm always personalized. Even when I'm just reading, when I'm just going through my Bible, just reading, when I come to this, across this right here, I still personalize this every time I read it most of it. Except right now because I'm sharing with you that you can do it also. Amen. Verse number 16 said, and now notice what I'm saying. I cease not. You know what it said? I cease not. I cease not to give thanks for you. Amen. Make a mention of you in my prayers. That the God of my the God of my of my of my Lord and but the God of my Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto me. The spirit of wisdom. Know how I'm saying it? But give unto me the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. The eyes of my understanding. Y'all see that, right? The eyes of my understanding being enlightened. Amen. Amen. That I may know what is the hope of his calling and what, and what the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in me as a saint. Amen. That... And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward me who believe according to the workings of his mighty power? Amen. What am I doing? I'm personalizing it. I'm speaking this over my life. Amen. Amen. What Paul spoke over the church, the believers there, I'm speaking it over me. Amen. Glory to God. And when I'm speaking over me, my spirit hears. How do faith come? Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by what? The word of God. Amen. So when I'm reading it, I don't read it silently so I don't hear it. I read it openly so my ears can hear it. Why do I do it like that? Because if I don't hear it, faith is not coming. Amen. But if I read it out loud, I can hear it. Faith coming by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. So Paul, so he told us that he... he Brother Hagen taught us this, amen, and he and he and he and, he, and it, it began to it began to operate in my life because I I, I, been, I used to do it every day just like him. I used to do it every day just like he was doing it, and believe me, folks, it works. 
<laughs> it works. <laughs> it works. Amen. Now notice what it said in verse number, verse number, uh, verse number 20 and 21, since we're over here. Amen. Because you see, what remember the first verse I read to you? <clears throat> in Luke chapter what? Chapter 9. In verse number 1. Remember I wrote, I read them to you that, yeah. at, at, that Jesus called the 12 disciples together and did what to them? He gave them what? Power and authority. He gave them power and authority. Amen. Now notice right, now notice what he says right here in, in now right here in, in Ephesians chapter 1. Amen. And verse number 20. Notice what he says right here in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 20. Which he wrote in Christ when he raised them, when he raised them far from the from the dead, and seated them at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Amen. So we don't, we understand that Christ was raised up and he was seated in heavenly places. Amen. Now notice what it said, verse number 21. Because this is your position. Once you begin to understand, you've been given authority. Once you begin to understand that God, as you begin to operate in this authority, you got you need to see yourself operating from the standpoint of your heavenly position. Not see you are in this world, but you're not of this world. Amen. When you're praying over the, when you're praying against, when you're coming against the principalities, when you're coming against the powers, when you're coming against the rulers of the dark of this world, you need to be, you need to see yourself praying from your heavenly position. What Christ has seeked, what Christ is. Amen. Because you've been caught up and been seated together with him in heavenly places. Amen. So you, when you see yourself praying over the thing, see yourself praying from your heaven position, your heavenly position and not your earthly position. Amen. Because you, if you keep looking from the earthly position, you're going to continue to see yourself as you've always seen yourself. But if you start praying from your heavenly position, you'll see yourself looking down. Amen. You see yourself looking down on the earth. Amen. That's what, and where's the enemy at? He's in the earth. He's in the earth. He's not in heaven. He's in the earth. Amen. So God wants you to see that he has placed all the works of the enemy under your feet. Notice what's said verse number 21. He said, far above all principalities and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and have put all things under his feet. Under who feet? Under Jesus' feet. And if we are seated in heaven places with Christ Jesus, those things are under our feet as well, as well. Amen. So we need to see, we need to understand that because if you don't if you don't see that, if you don't understand it, it's going to be hard for you to walk in authority. When the enemy goes to come against you, it's going to be hard for you to exercise divine authority, which is rightfully yours to operate in. Because what Jesus Christ has done for you. You have power, the Bible says in Luke chapter 10, verse number 19, that you have power over all the powers of the enemy. And he said that nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Amen. You've been given power, glory to God, over all the powers of the enemy. So when you look at that, you see that God intends for us as believers to come to the understanding that we not only are born again, we're not only born again, amen, children of God, but he has given us power. But he has given us power. Power for what? Power over all the powers of the enemy. Over all the powers of the enemy. He said that nothing shall by any means hurt you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Am I right? Amen. Now, so notice what he says right here in verse number 22 again. And had put all things under his feet. And gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Amen. To the church. Amen. So now I want you to look here in verse uh, chapter 3. Uh, over here in chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 3, hallelujah, glory to his name, and I want to look at verse number 14, Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 14, because this is, another, this is the other prayer that Paul prayed over Ephesians, amen, the believers, and God wants you to understand these prayers, he wants you to start praying them over your life every day. Amen. Every day. <laughs> Did you say every day? Yes, I said every day. <laughs> yeah. Who going to have time to praise over your life every day? You will. <laughs> Amen. So in verse number 14 it said, 
For, for this cause, now notice what he said, for this cause, I bow my knee, my knees, unto the Father of our Lord and of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant me, notice I'm saying that me instead of you, I'm, I'm, grant, I'm saying me, because I'm making it personal, that he would grant me according to the riches of his glory to be what? Strengthened with might by his spirit in my inner man. Notice how I'm personalizing this? In my inner man. Glory to God. That Christ may dwell in my heart. That Christ may dwell in my heart by faith. And be that I'm being rooted and grounded in love. I'm, I'm making it personal. Y'all see that, right? Amen. May be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that I might be filled with all the fullness of God. You see how I personalize that? Amen. Amen. See, once you learn, once you see, you, 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 need to, you need to work that in your, you need to write that Wherever you saw me changing the words, you need to put you need to put those uh, words in your Bible the same way. Amen. You need to put your words in your Bible the same way because you see these. What I'm sharing with you, it will it will it will speak directly to your spirit. It will speak directly to your spirit, and you pray them over and over and over and over and over, just like it happened for Kenneth Hagen. Those. Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and the revelation and the knowledge of him begin to uh, come forth in your life. Amen. And you're going to walk upon someone and you're going to, you know, just like the other night I was at work. I had to work, uh, I had to go to, uh, to out of town to work the other night. Amen. And while I was out working, the security guard, he walked up to me from Africa, from South Africa. He walked up to me and started talking to me. And I listened, I heard his accent. And uh, I said, where are you from? He said, I'm from South Africa. And he said, he, and then he asked me, are you from the islands? Some, he asked me, was I from the islands? He said, because he said, I look like a Fiji. Look like Fiji. Amen. I said, no. I, I, I said yeah, man, I'm from the island. <laughs> and he said, what island are you from? I said, the island of uh, Alabama. <laughs> He's all. <"Aw." laughs> I, just, I, I, just, I, I got him there. But uh, a lot of people think that I'm from Fiji for some reason. But the thing about it, folks, that the thing about it is that I, he was up there talking with me. Then all of a sudden, because I've been teaching y'all on this right here again, my gifts is starting to perk up again. It started to perk up again. And I began, and right there I was standing, he was, he was like uh, two feet away from me. And he was just talking, just talking, talking, talking. Then all of a sudden, the Spirit of God started to fall upon me. The, 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 the gifts begin to open up, begin to operate. God began to speak to my heart concerning this young man. Amen. And God began to tell me about his life, about his, his daughter that was left in Africa for, for some reason. And tears began to come to his eyes. Amen. Tears began to come to his eyes. And, and, and the Lord told me to tell him that she would soon be joining him. And he said, I can't wait to tell my wife this. Oh, he was so, he was so blessed. He was so blessed. Amen. Because see, then he, then, then he said, how do you know all these things? I said, I said, God is showing me this. Amen. And he was, I mean, he was blessed. He was really blessed to hear that. Amen. Amen. So when you begin to, when you, uh, when you read these scriptures over and over and over and, and begin to read them out loud so your ears can hear what you're saying, you're going to cause your inner man, your inner, your spirit man to become uh, uh, awaken to these scriptures, amen, to the spirit of wisdom, to the spirit of revelation, and the spirit of knowledge, amen, the gifts of the spirit, going to begin to be awakened in your spirit, amen, so you need to understand, what I, I'm not just telling you to do this just to, so you can just feel good about yourself, I'm telling you, if you do this, you're going to be able to minister to people that you never would have the opportunity to minister before, amen, because the gifts are going to begin to operate in you, Amen. So you need to understand that. So when I when I saw what he was saying here, it really got my attention. It really got my attention. Amen. And and, and I began to see what God was saying. Amen. And now now notice what he says right here. Now I'm reading from the from the 
a book of uh, Kenneth Hagin's here. Now, amen. I'm, I'm going to read something here from the book of Kenneth Hagin right here now. Because you see, we are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principality. Oh, glory. Amen. I thought of you drove up out there. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Welcome. Thank you. Amen. See, now notice what it says right here in uh, in uh, the book of Ephraim. He said, the turning, now this is what he said, Kenneth Hagin. This is what he said when he began to confess these scriptures over his life. Amen. Concerning uh, Ephesians chapter 4, chapter 3, verse 14 through 17. He said, the turning point in my life came when I prayed these prayers for myself, for, for myself more than a thousand times. Amen. He said, I started, I started by reading them out loud, beginning with the first chapter personalizing the prayers by saying me every, every, wherever Paul was said, said you. Amen. He began to personalize these prayers. Amen. Because see, I'm, reading, I'm, I'm, I'm quoting exactly what he said right here. Amen. From this book. And that's when he began to operate in the realm of the prophet like you never walked in before. I'm telling you, God wants to do something in your life like you've never seen before. I was just sharing with the, with the people here, because he was with me when that African man was standing right here beside me, amen, and all of a sudden the Spirit of God came over me, I began to prophesy over him. He was with me, amen, so he, he can verify what I'm saying is true. It's not, I'm not making up something, amen, because that brother was working with me that night. Glory to God. Now... I want you. I want you to understand here, because see, for example, reading the book, reading Ephesians, uh, chapter three, verse verse uh, four, chapter three, verse fourteen through seventeen, he said, "I will say for th I will say this cause for this cause I bow my knee unto the Father of my Lord Jesus Christ, the f of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that He would grant me according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in." The inner man that Christ may dwell in my heart by faith. See how I personalized that? At the same way he did it, he personalized it and he spoke it over his life over and over and over and over until the, 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 the gifts of the Spirit began to operate in his life. Amen. You see, if you're gonna be a if you're gonna be a serious Christian in these last days, then you need to understand that God wants you to begin to operate in divine authority. Amen? Divine authority. Because, you see, you're going to be confronted by the enemy time and time again. And if he can cause you to doubt who you are or the God that you serve, he's going to defeat you in every way. Amen? When you want to pray for someone that is hurting, someone that is sick, and and, he, and, 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 you, and you're going to feel like he's he going to tell you that you want to pray for that and nothing's going to happen. That's what the devil going to say to you. And then, and then all of a sudden you're going to say, well, why do you want to pray for that? You know ain't nothing going to happen. You're going to begin, you're going to begin to think that old Nate is going to try to come back up and try to take over. Amen. God wants you to realize that you have been uh, born of his spirit. What did God say in Genesis chapter 1 verse number 26? He said, and God created man, what? In his own image, after his own, after his likeness. So if God is a spirit, because the Bible tells us in John chapter 4, verse 23, that God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Now, <clears throat> so that means that we need to, we need to step out of this natural realm into the spiritual realm so that we can minister not by the flesh but by the spirit. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yes. Because if you if you can get if normally when you start when you start talking to one unless unless the Lord and my God look at the Holy Ghost all over me. Normally when you start ministering to someone and you started talking to one, you, you don't always start off in the spirit unless God wants to just, just go right into revealing the past, present, or future. 
Amen. In someone's life. Because this is what, this is what God wants. This is what God, this is how God brings people to a, a to deliverance. This is how He brings them to. See, God, God knows your God knows your beginning from your end. He already knows everything you've already done. And what He wants you to do is learn how to walk in His anointing, in His power, in His authority. Amen. Because it's already yours. But you can't use it unless you know that it's all that, that you have it. And this is the problem with a lot of church people. They already have the gift. They already have the anointing. They already have his presence on the inside of them. But they don't understand how to bring it forth. How to use it. How to operate in it. And this is what God want to do, folks. He want us to come to a place where we will know how to exercise divine authority in these last days. Because the devil is walking about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Seeking whom he may devour. And if you don't know who you are, you might be the one that get devoured. Because you see, he have no respect of person. He know that you're born again, child of God. And the moment you start talking about it, you he, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna realize that he that he know because people are gonna start even your family members, they're going to start talking against what you are saying because they want to keep you pressed down so that you will not operate in the power and authority which is rightfully yours to operate in. I remember when I started operating in this area. I was still staying in my mother's house. <laughs> I was still staying in my mother's house in Alabama. Amen. And and everybody, all, she had a lot of guests at the house. They was all sitting around the table drunk, drinking and, and everything. And I was living in my own house. Because I was, no, this was, I wasn't living, I wasn't staying with my mother then. I was living in my own house. I had, I had got kicked out. <laughs> I, I had got my own place. Amen. But I had been fasting for three days. And I went to visit my mother because after my fast, I was hungry. And I know she always cooked it. So I went to my mother's house to eat dinner. That's what happened. I went to my mother's house to eat dinner. Amen. And when I walked in the house, all those people sitting around the table drinking and smoking and all that stuff. Amen. And they said, they, I mean, the demons that was in them start speaking out against me. What are you doing? They're not invite you to come here. Amen. In my mother's house. And those demons start coming out against me. And before I knew it, I began to exercise authority. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bind you right now in the authority of him who have called me. And listen, what happened? This is what happened, folks. They said, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. Don't y'all mess with him. He knows something. <laughs> this, is what those devil, this is what the devil starts saying. Be quiet, be quiet. Don't mess with him. He knows something. Amen. When you know authority, the devil knows that you know what you're doing. And he won't mess with you because he knows that you have the authority and the power to cast him out. You understand what I'm saying? And so that's why it's so important that we understand the authority that God has given us. It's real. God has given it to us. And he wants us to learn about it. And he wants us to start walking in it. He wants us to start the exercising it in our workplaces. In our, in our everyday life. When the enemy attacking our family, our loved ones, he wants us to understand that we have been given authority. You know, somebody call you and tell you, uh, you got a snake in your house. Well, I, you said, no, you, uh, you are lying and the, and the truth is not in you. There's no snake in my house. In the name of Jesus, I bind those words and I cast them down. You're not speaking that over my life. You're not speaking over my family. You're not speaking over my household. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I bind those words and I cast them down. And then I go home and I say, in the name of Jesus, I bind every demonic force that's been that's trying to operate here. And I loose you from your assignment right now. The, the, I plead the blood of Jesus over my home, over my family, over everything that I got. Amen. Right now, Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 See, if you don't understand that you've been given authority, the devil will come in your house and he will take charge. He will take charge. Amen. Amen. So we have to understand that God has given us power and authority over all devils. Look with me in the book of Luke, chapter 10, and verse number 19. 
Amen. Verse number 19. Luke 10, verse 19. Amen. Now let's just start verse number. Let's just start verse number. Verse number 17. Verse number 17. Glory to God. There you go. Amen. Now, we go through a lot of scripture in this church. <laughs> you need Bible when you come here. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So now, in the book of Luke chapter 10, verse number 17, notice what it says here. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Now, why would the devil subject to them through the name of Jesus? Because the name of Jesus carries the power to set the captives free. Why was the devil subject to the disciples? Because God had gave, the Lord Jesus Christ had given them, he gave them power and authority. Amen. And they went out into the highways, into the byways, ministering to everyone that they come in contact with. And the devil recognized them as children of God. Amen. How did that happen? Because they walked in authority. Because they walked in authority. How do you know they walked in authority? Look at Luke chapter 9, verse number 1. One more time. Luke chapter 9, verse number 1. He said, and he called his 12 disciples together and gave them what? Power and authority. He gave them power and authority. Now, who's he talking to? He's talking to you. He's talking to me. He's talking to the believer. He gave us power and authority. Amen. Glory to God. Now, you see what God has done. God made the playing field. You see, before, before we became a Christian, we were dominated by the kingdom of darkness. Amen. But the moment you became a child of God, now the kingdom of God is on the inside of you. The kingdom of God is on the inside of you. Glory to his name. Y'all understand what I'm saying, right? The kingdom of God is on the inside of you. What did he tell the disciples in verse number, in verse number three? Verse number three, Luke chapter nine, verse number three. He said, go and preach the kingdom of God to what? All people. Healing the sick. Am I right? Amen. Or do I need you to turn over and just read it to you? Luke 9, 3. Luke 9, 3. Amen. Here we go. Uh, verse number two, or verse two of me. Not three, verse two. And he sent his and he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Amen. To heal the sick. How do they why do they do that? Because they've been given authority. They've been given power over sickness. They've been given power over the devil. You know, sickness and disease didn't come from God, so where is it coming from? It's coming from the devil. It come from the devil. Amen. So when, whenever you feel yourself getting sick, whenever the symptoms start, start, start coming up on your body, amen, don't just sit there and say, oh, I wonder why this happened to me. Don't ask that question. Why not you? Amen. Why do you think that you're too good for the symptom to come up on you? Well, you should think so because you're a children of the Most High God. You're royalty. You're royalty. Amen. You're children of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So God wants you to understand that you've been given power and authority. Notice what he says right here. Now let's go back to chapter 10. Let's go back here to chapter 10, verse number, verse number 17. Verse number 17. Notice what he said. Because, see, in verse number 1, in, in, in chapter 10, verse number 1, Jesus, he, he, he appointed 70 more, and he sent them. He gave them power and authority the same way he did the first 12 in, in chapter 9. Amen. In chapter 9. In chapter 10, in verse 1, he gave 70 more power and authority. And he sent them out to preach. Amen. He sent them out to preach. 
And then in verse number 17, they came back. They came back excited. They didn't come back beat up. They didn't come back discouraged. They came back with excitement. What do you mean excitement? They came back rejoicing, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. Chapter verse number 17. Amen. And that what it said? Even the devils are subject to us through your name. Through thy name. Amen. And then he said, I behold, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you, verse number 19. Behold, I give unto you power. Amen. To shred over serpents and over scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Am I right? Amen. Now, now that came from the word of God. That didn't come from me. That came from the word of God. That came from the word of God. You see, you can control what's going on around your children, around your household, around your job. Around you, your atmosphere around you could be electrified as much as you want it to be if you understood what I'm sharing with you right now. Because you see, God wants you to experience the power that He has given you as a child of God. You have been given power and authority as children of Almighty God. Read verse, 19, read verse number 19 with me. He said, Behold, I give unto you power. And behold, I give unto you power to shred over serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. And he said, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. He said, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So if God has given you power and authority over the enemy, and he told you, you're not going to get hurt. So what is there to be afraid of? If he said, behold, I give you power over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So why would you be afraid to exercise Power over a devil or someone that is demon possessed. Why would you be afraid? There's no need to be afraid. I remember my wife one time. She we she was a uh, uh, over these women, this women group. And one night uh, around about eleven o'clock, she got a phone call, and they and this woman asked her to please come and pray with her because she was going through some uh, her. her uh, what was that, huh? Her daughter, her daughter was raped. Amen. And we went over, she asked us to come and pray for her. Amen. So we went over to that woman's house to pray for her and her daughter. Amen. And, and as we was praying, the woman that invited us over there to pray for the daughter, she flopped down on the floor just like a snake and started watering. And started saying, I know you. <laughs> She said, I know you. You're a holy one of God. <laughs> I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. Amen. You know why? When you understand authority, the devils around you will recognize the authority that you operate in, that you walk in. So you, now, you don't have to confront the devil. The devil will he will begin to manifest when you are around him. I remember when we was at, when we was at uh, Calvary Christian, uh, Pastor Pastor Godot always used to call me to go back in the back with these type of people. <laughs> One day I was back there by myself. My wife she come looking for me. Where's my husband? They said he's in the back. He's in the back room with this with this with the people with this man praying for him. They said, why ain't y'all helping him? They said, oh, he got it. He, he, he got it under control. You know why? Because you see, I understand the power. I understand the authority. Amen. I understand the power and authority that God has given me. Amen. And God wants you to understand the same thing. And this is why pressure is applied on Christians, especially when they come under this teaching. Because the devil don't want you to learn this. Amen. He doesn't want you to learn this. And you will come under a lot of pressure. When you started studying along this line, you will come under a lot of pressure because the devil does not want you to learn it. Because he knows the moment you understand that you've been given power and authority, that his heyday over your life is over with. Amen. His heyday over your life is over with. Because now you're able to set people free when you wasn't 
when you didn't know that you could. Now you know that you can. You 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 minister you, you minister to people everywhere you go. Amen. People come up and start talking to you, and they want to talk all this mess. Next thing you know, you turn that conversation around. You start talking about Jesus. Amen. Amen. And when you start talking about Jesus, now they want they want they want they want they feeling uncomfortable now. They ready to go. But long as they can talk, they miss. They are saying they they, they, they they want to come keep pulling into your ears. But when you try to turn the situation around, and start talking about Jesus, they are gonna to want to go. So that's the time. That's the time you need to just turn up the heat. Say, Amen. <laughs> that's the time you turn up the heat and just and just start and just start talking about ask ask the question. Are you born again? If you would die today, what would you spend eternity? Amen. Oh. Start asking the question. Amen. Amen. Because you see. They, they need to hear. They need to know. Amen. They need to know. Now, when we're talking about, when we're talking about this here, see, God wants to bring, he wants you to begin to operate in a spirit of revelation. Amen. He wants you to begin to operate in a spirit of revelation, a spirit of wisdom, revelation. Amen. Because, you see, that's when you begin to understand who you are as a child of God. As long as you're still walking around and, and, and living a uh, Christian life but being defeated, you will never be. You will never confront the enemy that comes against you. Notice what it says in Ephesians chapter six. Ephesians chapter six, verse number ten. Ephesians chapter six, verse number ten. Because you see, you are a child of the Most High God. Amen. And you and you need to see what God is. What God said about you. Let's go to chapter. Let's go to chapter two first. Ephesians chapter 2 first. Amen. Because I want to show you. Remember I talked to you a while ago about your position as a child of, as a child of God. You're, you're, you're in this world, but you're not of this world. And I showed you your, your, your seated position. Amen. I want to show it to you. I want to show it to you right now because so, I want you to see this for yourself. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2. There we go. Now notice what it says right here. Uh, can I just, I'm just going to read from verse number one, because this is all relevant. It's all relevant. Verse number one says, And you had he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sin, wherein in time past he walked, according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Verse three, Among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as others. Verse number four. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, had quickened us together. In other words, made us alive. Made us alive together with Christ. Had quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. See, you didn't get saved because you were so good. You got saved because of his grace. Amen. It was because of his grace. Amen. For by grace are you saved, and verse number six, and have raised, those what he said, verse six, very important, because this is where you got to see yourself, and have raised us up together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. See, you've been raised up as a child of God in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, when Christ was raised up into heavenly places, he was seated where? At the right hand of the Father. Am I right? Amen. So the Father is right here. Now Jesus is caught up and seated at his right hand. The right hand means what? The position of power and authority. The right hand means position of power and authority. So Jesus, he was delegated from the Father. He was delegated the power and authority to operate in this earth. Amen. Amen. Now, we've been caught up with him when we became a born-again child of God. we become caught up with him. Now, where we're seated at? In heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. Now, guess what, we, now guess what we're at? We're at his right hand. We are now at his right hand because now he has delegated the power and authority to us, the church. You see, he came, he's not walking in this earth right now, exercising the power and authority because he has given it to you. He's given it to you to operate in. He's given it to you to, to continue to work that he's begun. 
that he started. Amen. How do you know that? Well, you read the book of John chapter 14 and verse number 12. He said, uh, very, very, I say unto you, the works that I do shall you do also, and greater works these shall you do, because I go to my Father. He gave you the work to complete, to continue it. Amen. He gave it to you. So now we see here that God is calling us to understand our position, not only so we can see ourselves seated in heaven praises, but that we can see ourselves walking in power and authority in this earth. In this earth. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So now as we understand this, we can now we can go on over to Ephesians chapter 6. Let's go on over to Ephesians chapter 6. Amen. Glory to God. My God, I, I, oh, I, oh my God. This is one of my favorite subjects, y'all. <laughs> Faith and authorities is my two favorite subjects. And God is bringing them all back up to my spirit. He, he's beginning to pump me, pump back up in my spirit. Why? Because it's time for us to get uh, uh, to get in position. It's time for us at the church to get in position. Amen. Notice what it said right here in verse number 10. He said, find my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Now notice, he, he gave the disciples power and authority to use his name. Amen. He never told them to go use their name. He gave them authority and power to use his name. His name. Now notice what he said in verse number 10. Find my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You're not trying to be strong in your own abilities. Your strength comes from resting in his abilities. Relying on his abilities. Working in you. Y'all need to see that. Mm. 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 Glory to God. I'm telling you, this is all over me. Verse number 11 said, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. What is the wiles of the devil? The deceit, the, 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 the lies and deceit, the fiery dots go to coming at you. Amen. Those words that the enemy uses to try to destroy you or whatever. Amen. Notice what, notice what it said, verse number 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. See, God wants you to understand that you have been seated far above these principalities and these powers. Amen. You've been seated far above these principalities and power. How do, how do I know that? The Bible tells me that. The Bible tells me that. Well, where does it say that, Pastor? Y'all you, you, want me to show you? Go back to Ephesians chapter 1. Look at verse number 21. Amen. He said, far above principalities and powers and might and dominion in every name that is named. And had put all things, verse number 22, and had put all things under his feet. If they're under Jesus' feet, and we're seated in heavenly places in him, guess what, folks? They're under our feet. They're under our feet. Glory to God. Am I making any sense to y'all tonight? Because, you see, we're, 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 we're going deep into the last days, and they're, they're constantly passing ungodly laws, to try to manipulate the church to obey their ungodly laws. And you have to understand your position as a child of God that you've been given power and authority over all the powers of the enemy. Amen. Now I'm not trying to tell y'all to go out and start no fights, but I'm telling you to stand for your rights as a child of God. You stand up for your rights as a child of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, glory. Amen, amen, amen. So notice what he says right here in uh, Ephesians chapter 6 again. Now let's look at verse number. Where we at now? Verse, verse, number, verse, number, verse number 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Amen. You see, you're not going to go out fighting this enemy in your strength. You're going to stand 
clothed in your robe of righteousness, with your lawn girt about with truth. And then what are talking about in, verse number, in the next verse there? Have your lawn girt about with truth, put on a breastplate of righteousness. So you're not going to stand in your own ability. You go, everything that you're going to do is going to be because of his ability working in you. Your feet shown the pillars of God, Pete, and, and taking the, the, the put uh, and, and she kept piling out of my sight. Here we go. Let me just read this to you right here. Glory to God. Verse number 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand, to withstand in the evil day and have him doing all the things. Stand therefore, having your lawn girded about with the truth and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Glory to God. Don't forget about the breastplate of righteousness. Girded you along with the truth and put on the breastplate of righteousness, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shone with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And he said, verse number 16, and above all, taking what? The shield of faith. So you got to have faith. You got to believe that you are able to walk in authority. You got to believe that you are capable of fulfilling the commission of go ye into all the world. Amen. You need the authority to operate in if you're going to fulfill the commission that Christ has given us. He gave it to the early church and they operated in it. What is to hinder us from operating in it today? Religion. The same thing that came against them was religion. And the same thing that's coming against the church today is religion. Amen. Religion is nothing but a form of a duty. Amen. What we're talking about is a relationship with our Heavenly Father. Walking in divine relationship. Sharing his throne from on high. Mm. My God. Amen. So notice what he said, verse number, verse number, verse number 17 again. And, the, and take the helmet of salvation. See, God wants your mind protected. The helmet of salvation is to protect your mind. It covers your head, protects your mind. Amen. That's what I like to think it does. Amen. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. How many know what the sword of the spirit is? It's the word of God which is the word of God. Amen. Learn how to use it as a soldier would use his sword on the battlefield. Amen. Because everything that we're talking about here, this armor that we're talking about is military, is, is, is military, uh, uh, it's the military protection garment that you put on before going into battle. Everything we're talking about, amen. Remember, if you go, if you ever been into the military, if you ever been into the army, I have. When I went into the army, they changed my whole outlook. The first thing they did was cut my hair off. <laughs> no, the first thing they did was gave me a, they, they 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 gave me uh, uh, some fatigue. They gave me uh, uh, military clothing, military underwear, and everything. Military socks, military boots. Amen. And then the next thing they did, they took me and cut my hair. Because they got me all dressed up now looking like with the army clothes on. Now they're going to make me, they're going to take me and change my outlook. See, when you become a soldier, everything about you begin to change. Everything about you begin to change. Because you can't be a good soldier if you don't uh, conform Remember what it said in Romans chapter 12, verse number 2? And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You got to be conformed, and you got to see yourself conforming. Amen? You got to see yourself being transformed from what you were to what you are going to become. See, I went in the army as a young teenager. 
didn't know much about nothing. Didn't know nothing about no weapons. Didn't know nothing about nothing. But as they began to train me, I began to be transformed. I began to be transformed. And so much to the point that I became an excellent soldier. When they were called for a certain uh, 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 field trip for people to go out on, I was one of the ones that they chose because they had trained me to be a leader and to, and to uh, set up and to operate from the standpoint that the people would be supplied with the things that, that my unit was supposed to supply. Amen. So he trained us. We were trained. And this is what God is saying for us today. It's time to be trained. It's time to be retrained. We have been, we have been walking around as lukewarm Christians long enough. Now it's time to begin to uh, be retrained. Refocus. It's time to start being the Christians that he created us to be. And my time is up. Huh? For today. I'm not done with this. I'm not done with this. But for today, I'm done. Because God is going to retrain you. Now, my job now is to start retraining you. To understand authority. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost on this message. God wants to retrain you so that you can begin to walk in this work in this earth as children of authority. Remember, to them, to as many as believe on him, to them gave he what? Power to become what? The sons of God. Or you might say sons and daughters of God. Amen. That's found in John chapter 1. Amen. God wants you to come to the point that you believe, that you begin to operate in what you believe. Amen. I got I know that my time is up. And I see all, I see all, I see, I see all of that. Amen. But God is good. Yes, God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna pick back up here on next Tuesday night. Next Tuesday night. Amen. Glory to God. It's time for us to take about eating an offering. Glory to God. Those of you that are with us by the internet, you want to sow a seed tonight, you're most welcome to do so. Amen. You may go to my website, MattBergenMinistries.com. Amen. And uh, you may use your ATM card or your credit card there. Amen. And, and that's LarryBergenMinistries.com. You may use your ATM card or your credit card there and plant your seed there. Amen. Or you may uh, go to my, uh, you might send it through uh, the post office system. Amen. You may you may uh, want to send it using your post office, using your, your checkbook. And that's P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California. Nine five eight four one. Amen. So, however God use, however God wants you to to plant your seed, you plant your seed the way that you are able to do it, and know that God gonna be glorified from it. Amen. So, you want to use your ATM card? You may go to my website, LabrickMinistries.com, or you may uh, send it in through the mail system, that's Library Ministries, P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. God bless you all as you consider your giving. The Bible tells us in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 6. Amen. Let me just get there and read it. just came to my spirit, so let's go to it. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 6. He said, But this I say, he which sows sparingly shall also reap sparingly, and he which sows bountifully shall also reap bountifully. See, you need to be careful how you give, because you, whatever way you give, 
is going to determine how God is going to give back to you. Amen. And I, I know that a lot of people, for, they, don't, they don't say, well, I don't, I, I'm not going to be giving no tenth of my money. I work hard for that money. <laughs> if, if you don't, you're going you're gonna to miss out on the blessing that God has for you. Amen. So remember to, to, to give when God, when, when God put on your heart to do so. Amen. So now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all those who have given tonight, Father. As, as we have given, Father, you said in your word that it shall be given back unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into our bosom. And with the same measure that we meet with all, Father, you said that it shall be measured to us again, back to us again. And so, Father, we believe, Father, right now that houses is being paid off. Amen. Supernaturally. People coming out of debt. Supernaturally. Cars being paid off. Vehicles being paid off. School bills being paid off. Loans. Debt is being canceled. In Jesus name. Father, I praise you for it right now. And I declare it right now, Father, your word will not fall to the ground. Because you said when we give, it is given back to us. It shall be. And we believe it. We receive it as done. In Jesus' name. And I give you glory and praise for it. Amen and amen. amen. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So now, you may be listening right now. You say, Pastor, I never made Jesus Christ Lord of my life. Or I did make Jesus Christ Lord of my life, but I, I, I failed. I was not able to keep the commitment that I made to him. And I backslid. Pastor, I want to give my life right with God. But Pastor, I never gave him my heart. I want, I, I, I want, to, I want to dedicate my, my life to him today for the first time. Amen. For either one of those calls, you may never have given your heart to the Lord. But today you making a decision that you want to give your heart to the Lord. Amen. You want to do so right now. You have that opportunity. Uh, you already have given your heart to the Lord. But you backslid and you want to rededicate your life to the Lord. This is for you also. Amen. Say this prayer with me. It's a very simple prayer. And you just say it with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and my Savior. And I thank you for saving me. Amen. It's a simple prayer. But if you said that prayer from your heart, Jesus Christ is already going to work on your behalf. And the angels are rejoicing because of you making a decision to return to God or to commit your life to him for the first time. Amen. We love you. We appreciate you. We thank God for you. Amen. So, Father, for those who said that prayer with me for the first time, for those who rededicate their life to you, Father, I ask you to seal that word in their heart and let them begin to come forth in the newness of life in Christ Jesus. And old things are passed away according to your word, Father. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, you said old things are passed away and you said, Behold, all things become new. So, Father, let it be even as you have said in your word. I thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be with us tonight. You say, Pastor, I need special prayer. Amen. If that's you, you want me to pray for you right now, I'll pray for you. You want me to pray for your sister? Come on. Come on. Let me pray for you. You said that look at me like that? <laughs> You always be the first one up here. Mother be the first one today too. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I release the anointing, Father, that lift burdens and destroy yokes. I exercise divine authority in the spirit realm over her life right now in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, I rebuke every demonic force that is working against her mind, her will, her emotion, and her health. And I release divine will be tear, carried out in her life. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven in and over her life. I thank you for it. Amen. Amen. Anybody else want prayer today? Come on, brother. Amen. Glory to God. You have a special prayer request? Something happened with your ear? You believe? That God won't touch you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to this ear. And I release your anointing, your healing power. 
and I declare, be healed in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I thank you that from this day forward, this ear is going to begin to recover and return to normal. In Jesus' name, I thank you for it. From the crown of the head to the soles of your feet, touch him right now, Father. Touch him right now. And God, I give you glory for it. Breathe afresh upon him, Father. Breathe afresh upon him. Touch his heart like never before with a hunger and a thirst for more of you. I give you all the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for coming, my brother. Amen. Huh? I believe that it's witchcraft. Okay, then that, I, it's, 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 it's healed. No more witchcraft. No more witchcraft. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Why did you say that about you? Huh? Why did you say no more witchcraft? He said he believed it was witchcraft. Oh. No more witchcraft. So I said no more witchcraft. Because the anointed has rest upon it. Have lifted that burden and destroyed that yoke. Amen. Amen. Let us all stand. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity that you have given us today, Father, to declare your word and to speak your word and to expound upon your word concerning divine authority Christ authority in us yes. we believe that father and we will exercise that authority we thank you for it in advance in Jesus name now father I bless all your people that are viewing us and all that are here in the service today father just touch them father right now in Jesus name and don't forget God bless you don't forget uh, we're going to be praying in the morning at 9 a.m. Again at 12 noon and again at 3 p.m. For tomorrow and Friday, Thursday and Friday. This We do this every Thursday and every Friday. So we ask you all to join us. God bless you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.